don't know what they're doing in Iowa trailer parks, eh? Yeah. Because I like a little with the bread, you see. Put up a pepper steak pie and throw it against the wall, thanks. <laughs> There it is, flannel panel. Yeah. So you have to click on flannel panel first, then you press notifications. Shows us the same notifications, but this time when you click on it, there it is. Well done, old timer. Nice work, brother. Old people trying to figure out um, <laughs> Instagram. We're uh, out at uh, Kalani. It's uh, population 300 and something people. Uh, we're stoked. It's another leg in the uh, regional tour. Um, they're pumped out the back. I've got to tell you, this place is full. Um, we're looking at 80 to 100 chairs tonight, which is just unreal. The way things are rolling at the moment, uh, it's just a hell of a lot of fun. We've got to smash this out tonight. There's no doubt about it. So it's been a big week, big week at the moment, big day today. One of my grandfathers would have turned 980. My daughter's fucking wild, she just freaks me out. Loves her Instagram. She's a good looking girl, but she's on the Instagram there and they're posting all the photographs of themselves. Send me. Mate, my sister is 10 years older than me and I remember very clearly in the 70s, the number one thing she didn't like was a stranger following her. <laughs> my daughter's absolutely fucking enraptured. She's got 4,700 of them. <laughs> posting the photos, some of it, you know, in her bikinis and stuff like that, her and her girlfriend. She loves it. She gets a little thumbs up. Emoji, she gets the love arts and she's all the likes, she loves it. I just say, honey, that little um, fist bump you're getting from hashtag Casarina Ken. <laughs> That's not what's going on. She posted a photo there the other day in the beach there, because you know the way the girls are wearing their fucking bikinis down the beach, it's like Coca Cabana up there at North Malalu. <laughs> She posts a photograph and I'm watching the notifications come in. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It was a love heart, a packet of cable ties, some rehypnol and a bag of lime. <laughs> my, my brain has been elsewhere. So what's going to be good is I'm just going to be myself tonight. That's what's going to happen. You know, I'll slip jokes in there. I only got to do 25 minutes, so it should be easy, you know. But I might get a little loose. It might be a little crazy. I'm going to come out hard. This is so confusing. I might be a retarded. <laughs> oh shit, I, you can't say retarded no more. Y'all know that. Now the proper term is feminist. <laughs> Coming out hard straight away. Americans, there's certain things we don't understand like geography or anything else. So she's coming over here and she says, look, when I get there for making baby formula for Apollo in Australia, have y'all got milk? He says, come again. She said, in Australia, have y'all got cows? I went, holy shit, the inbreeding is making us dumber. <laughs> Tell me about the first time you ever did comedy. Tim was there. Uh, I was at the I was the social director at the Joondal Up Country Club, and we booked a comedy night. Yeah. And uh, it was good. We had, as I, but yeah, so the boys came up, and um, yeah, we had a pretty good room. But I was just trying to. I was talking the other day. Were you day. planning on doing comedy that night? We, we we did a comedy night. It was a Tuesday. It was a Thursday, I, Thursday night. Nick Hunter came up. I know they were doing a comedy night. Were you on the bill? No, I just said I just said that. Uh, I'm going to book this comedy night, and we were paying them. And I said, "Ask him if I can have five. <laughs> yeah. And uh, typical, I think I took seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a dog with two dicks. I was loving it. Got down to Kalani, two and a half, no, like three and a half hour trip coming down here. Uh, there was a lot of shit talking in the car on this one, actually. So I think everyone's feeling either depressed or excited. Depends how you came out of that. Packed full of seating. Good room. I think the whole community's come out for this one, so um, yeah, no, they're into up. it. Certainly into it, mate. I drove three and a half hours out here. If I can get that round of applause, wow! <laughs> Aren't you a bunch of? Aren't you a bunch of? I'm saying. I'm feeling a little bit of a vibe. Is it because my eyes don't blink? Is that what it is? <laughs> is that what's going on right now? <laughs> I'm not on drugs, bro. They just don't blink. It's insane. I don't do drugs. Can you believe it? No. No? <laughs>
That's so crazy, man. It ruined my life, this look. No, because it might be. I'll do one for you and then we'll move on. So just know that I forced it. No, listen, this has ruined my life, man, because this might be good for comedy. It is not good for family court proceedings. I'm not winning the case, all right? We did one of these corporate gig type of things for a uh, uh, department of education. I was supposed to do the clean material. I don't know what that means. And he said, look, just do a tight 30. And I found out, I did that sperm donor joke, and I found out that both Christians and gay people got something in common. They hated me. <laughs> Well, Tim and, and Nick just came up and said, um, how long have you been doing comedy? And I said, well, I haven't. I said, that was kind of it. I'd had a couple of goes before. And um, Tim said to me, uh, do you know about open mic? And I've gone, no. Nah. <laughs> so here's a question. Where was your first open mic? My first open mic was um, in the comedy lounge. Jim's awkward for us blokes at the moment. I don't know anyone in my generation. They, they, get, they do the induction and all that sort of stuff and they clue you out. They give you, send you around the place. And um, they said to me, they said, oh, Gareth, if you're ever struggling um, or you see someone struggling, you should spot them or maybe you could reach out and they'll, they'll spot you. So I thought, oh, yeah, fair enough. So I was there day two when I was um, doing a PB and it was just me and this big rock ape in the corner there. It was like he was lifting half a bridge or something. So I called him over and he's coming over. He's going, what's fucking going on there, mate? What are you doing? I said, oh, I'm just doing a PB. He goes, what are we doing, mate? Deadlifts, what are we lunge? Fucking squats, what are you up to? I said, oh, no, I'm just training for the uh, HBF half marathon. I know if you could give me a cup of water every two Ks. <laughs> he said, you're a fucking mate, get out of here. I feel sorry for Bill though, hey? Like... I don't really know, I'm a retarded guy, but you know, I feel sorry for the dude because well he warned us about coronavirus like 10 years ago and all we did was go, fuck you Bill, you Illuminati piece of shit, you're not gonna barcode us, you fucking reptile king motherfucking adrenal gland piece of shit and dude, like, it's Bill Gates, he invented Windows He's done more for this planet than probably anyone else. And even when he invented the computer, I'm pretty sure people on typewriters were like, Fuck you, Bill! <laughs> you Illuminati, oh fuck, I ran out of ink. Just send it, would you? Just send it on. Don't look the stamp, he'll probably get our DNA. We don't know what that is yet, but uh, I don't trust the guy, that's for sure. Two horses, mate. <laughs>